Hi, I'm Sarah L, and welcome to the first episode of Boating New Zealand. We're going to look at the latest boat tests, product news and reviews, some interesting marine related stories and some exciting boats for sale. In this episode we'll be looking at some stories from the September edition of Boating New Zealand which is on sale now. First up, here's John Eichelsheim, our fishing and powerboat expert. He's looking at the Riviera 64 sports motor yacht in the first part of our extensive test on this amazing boat. Today we're going to take a look at Riviera's brand new 64 sports motor yacht. This vessel is almost you know, all things to all people, but one of the things that it's really good at is fishing. It is a fishing boat in, in so many ways, and this one's totally rigged for, uh, for big game fishing. Uh, it does have a platform, a wide boarding platform, but uh, that's really not going to impact you too much uh, when you're game fishing. The cockpit at the lower level, it's wide, it's teak covered, um, it's perfect for all of those sort of water activities, sports activities, etc. Now we've got a great big live bait tank here, of course it's got the fish TV of course, uh, you can see the baits, make sure they're healthy. Um, across the back we haven't got just one freezer, we've actually got two freezers and they can be configured as fridges or freezers. Big, plenty and plenty of, uh, of cold storage there. On the other side we have an electric grill and a fully equipped uh, wet bar galley area here, um, fantastic out of the way outside, you know, you can cook out here, no fumes etc. As well as that we've got quite a lot of handy storage, this boat's really well endowed with storage spaces and something else that uh, is nicely tucked away, we've got one of the twin disc joystick controls here, nice and, uh, and helpful when you're trying to dock the boat. So this is a pretty nice sort of an area. Um, as you can see, you can enclose it fully if you like, so it can be totally protected from the elements. You know, you're, you're covered overhead, so you know, you're not gonna get wet, there's no sun coming in, but you're also open to the cockpit, so it's a really social area, nicely set out uh, for entertaining, great big table, ice maker, everything you need to enjoy the outdoors without having to put up with the weather. We've stepped up into the saloon of the galley area, which is aft here, and immediately you're struck by you know that the standard of finish in here it really is superb it, it's sumptuously appointed and it really does look beautiful right down to these fantastic uh, stone countertops everything in this galley um, is is top of the range we've got Miele appliances uh, domestic grade appliances um, all of the best possible quality uh, gear I really do like um, all of the the, the polished uh, the polished trim there, it looks fantastic, nice and shiny. Gives it quite a traditional look, but so much of the rest of the boat is, is so modern. Here's something else I haven't seen in the Riviera before. We've got this rather um, beautifully engineered pentagraph door. That allows the helms person to come down from upstairs, down the stairs, straight out onto the side deck to get to the bow or to get to the lines. Really handy, thoughtful idea. So this is the main lounging area. Again, it's, it's a really generous size. And two very generous, very comfortable settees, one each side of the saloon. So let's head downstairs. Pretty nice stairs they are, in fact, all the nice wooden floor here. Uh, slightly lighter colour too, which is nice contrast. Um, now this is a four cabin setup. We've got a couple of guest cabins, one either side, and a, a shared uh, bathroom for those cabins. And then we've got a VIP cabin in the bow, and we have the master's cabin amidship. We should go and take a look at the master cabin because that really is quite something. Come on down. So as you can see, a really spacious cabin. It's the full beam of this vessel and that beam is considerable. Um, gotta love the big picture windows either side. Sure, we're sitting in a marina at the moment, but you're gonna have panoramic views either side. The bed is really comfortable, really large, plenty of headroom, everything is, is trimmed beautifully. In fact, the, the standard of finish in this boat is quite extraordinary, um, and that's something that, that Riviera seems to be getting better with every new model. It just uh, every time they seem to be able to lift that standard further so this is a really good example so these are really decent sized uh, hanging lockers i think this one's even got a safe that's uh, that's standard from riviera you get your own safe to put your your valuables away something riviera has done with this boat is, is ensured that there's really easy access to the system so all over the boat there are these little little hatchways that just make it easier to get to, to wiring or plumbing or or the boat system so you know when it comes to troubleshooting or, or finding something that makes it that much easier. The uh, ensuite bathroom again is a, a really generous size. 
uh, wants more that stone type floor so it's going to be really easy to, to keep clean and to wash down. Really generous shower box, um, nice and separate of course and uh, yeah just generally very well appointed. Now for something a bit different. We all know the lines, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. And we know it's bad luck to kill an albatross. But how much do we know about the palm that these lines came from? Let's take a look at Coleridge's classic, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and learn how it helped to spark early efforts in albatross conservation. was cheered, the harbour cleared, merrily did we drop below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. At over 600 lines, the rhyme of the ancient mariner is a very, very long poem. In the 1800s, the poem became a must read and learn for the schoolboys and girls of the time. The height of the poem's popularity corresponded with the rise of the early conservation movement and the founding of the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, which fought long and hard to stop the wearing of feathers and the shooting for sport of all birds. Water, water, everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water, everywhere, nor any drop to drink. Most of you sailors are a superstitious lot, and the superstition that surrounds the poem is the magnificent wandering albatross flying non-stop over endless empty seas carries with it the souls of lost sailors. At length did cross an albatross, through the fog it came, as if it had been a Christian soul. We hailed it in God's name. In the poem, an albatross saves the crew and the ship by leading them out of the ice. The ancient mariner then shoots and kills the albatross, this murderous act condemns the ship and all its crew except the mariner to a watery grave. Instead of dying with his crewmates, the mariner is condemned to a life of wandering the world, eternally telling and retelling his story. Since then, at an uncertain hour, that agony returns. Until my ghastly tale is told, this heart within me burns. The Mariner's Sad Tale is a catalyst that by accident has helped the modern world appreciate the bounty of the sea and help to preserve the birds of our oceans, the largest and most magnificent of all, the albatross. Nowadays, thousands watch albatross chicks fledge live on the internet. They enter competitions to help name them, all the while never realizing that maybe an old, very long poem helped kickstart it all. Welcome back to Boating New Zealand. In the first part of his review, John introduced us to the impressive new Riviera 64. Now he's going to take us further inside this impressive flybridge cruiser. Well, this is a spectacular flybridge. Uh, up here, there's just this overwhelming smell of leather. It smells fantastic. Uh, we've got leather upholstery on the, on, the, on the helm seats. These are all electric fully adjustable, extremely comfortable and supportive. And once you're sitting here, you know, the vision is, is really superb. I can see right down to the bow. I can't see to the stern, but we've got a camera to take care of that. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty good place to be. It's completely enclosed if you want it to be. Slide the door closed and you're, you're nice and cosy up here. You can also close it off from down below should you desire to do so. So when you're driving the boat, it's whisper quiet up here. You really would barely know that you're underway. Um, you know, we, th this boat does about 33 knots flat out and even at that speed, the, the sensation of speed, it, it, it kind of just passes you by. You're, you're so well up 
above the water here and again the, the quietness and the smoothness are quite remarkable. Uh, the, the V12 MANs are particularly smooth engines I have to say. Now part of the whole package is, is um, twin discs uh, quick shift thr uh, digital throttle and of course um, the SJS joystick control. This is again quite a remarkable system. It allows you to put the boat pretty much wherever you want to put it and uh, this is a very tight berth here at Riviera and it's amazing how easily they get this big boat in and out. With the system you can move the boat sideways, you can rotate it on its on its axis, uh, you can crab it to in any direction you want, might want it to go or you can hold it in place. It uh, is is quite fantastic, it uses a combination of, of um, of twin shafts and uh, a stern and bow thrusters, they all work together uh, to move the boat wherever you want it to go. Really really good system. So pretty hard to miss the uh, the array of uh, 25 inch Raymarine multifunction displays. Um, top of the range, latest models, they give you just such a variety of, of, of options and, and, and choices. But of course it's also got a Raymarine autopilot, um, You've got things like uh, the, the Humphrey automatic trim tabs and they even uh, adjust the angle as you're turning the boat so they stop the boat from heeling over too much uh, and it just makes the whole process easier and much more comfortable and it makes boating something that is just more enjoyable. Another great feature of, of this uh, flybridge is the electric sunroof here. It's in the closed position at the moment of course but it comes complete with insect screens, light screens, so this is as much uh, an entertaining and lounging area as anywhere else on board the boat. Um, lots of space here to sit. You can be nice and uh, nice and social so the, the, the helmsman doesn't have to feel like they're up here all alone. You've even got your own TV. Uh, their own, there's a fridge up here, a little wet bar. It, it's pretty well set up. It'd be a great place to spend time while you're heading from place to place or even at anchor. And here we are on the aft deck, the aft upper deck. Uh, an extension of the flybridge I guess. Again another area where you can spend time outdoors this time and it's, uh, it too has its own little food preparation area or drinks preparation area. There's an ice maker here. Um, again it's a lovely place to spend a bit of time shaded which is great um, and probably as important as anything it also has another helm station up here on the upper deck. This is the one that you probably use out of choice when you try to dock the boat or get it out of a, a tight space and it's a fully functional helm station with a wheel with all of the controls not just the joystick like downstairs uh, it's even got an MFD up here so you can see pretty much what you need to see anywhere at any time. So that's Riviera's new 64 sports motor yacht. Riviera have managed to take everything pretty much everything that's in the 72 and the 68 and you can get it in the 64. It's a smaller boat but you'd hardly know it. It really doesn't feel that way and it's got so many features. Everything that the bigger boats has in a slightly smaller package I think it's going to be a real winner for Riviera. The Scandinavians are well known for their design style and Danish manufacturer X Yachts has been making performance oriented cruises since the late 1970s. I really enjoyed going sailing on this XP38, which has finally found its way down under to its new Dutch Kiwi owner. So the P in XP stands for performance, and this yacht is designed to be a performance oriented cruiser and has quite a few things set up for racing. In addition, the owner has chosen the sail package, which means a few extra bits and pieces. So we've got these two big wheels here which, um, from which we have great visibility when we're steering. So we have a really nice easterly for our sail today, not too much chop, very easy to get the sails up. The jib is on a furler and it has flexi batten so it can easily be, be furled up but also keep its shape when it's in use. Upwind we're doing around six and a half knots and when we're starting to reach under Janica we're just doing just over eight and about 12 knots of breeze. The owner has opted for the standard rig, there is a larger rig you can get, but he has also opted for the deeper keel, so the keel's a little bit deeper, which gives the boat a bit more writing moment for sailing shorthanded. We have the boarding platform which 
just pulled up when we were underway, but makes it easy to get on and off the dock. So the boat has a German main sheet system, so running forward to the front of the boom, dividing and coming back under the decks to a winch each side, which makes the boat quite well set up for short-handed sailing. And I know on our sail today that really came in handy. It's got another pair of winches forward of that for the jib and Jenica, and then up on the cabin top, another pair of Harkin winches, one which is electrified for halyards and controls. So the owner has opted to have these more simple racing style wheels rather than having a big pedestal with instruments. So the instruments are forward on the cabin top where they're easily visible when racing. The owner has opted for a two berth rather than three berth layout in order to have all this enormous storage space here on the starboard side. So all the sails fit in there and can be accessed either through the cabin or through this large locker here. With this two cabin layout, there's one large cabin in the bow and then a second quarter berth to port with plenty of headroom and storage space. On the starboard side is the head and shower and behind it that large locker that's accessed from the cockpit. So there's lots of seating space here around the table which folds out into a hexagon shape. Underneath there there's also that important attribute of any cruising boat a drinks locker. The owner has opted for this blonded oak interior to keep things nice and nautical and the imitation teak floors. While this boat is really comfortable for cruising, the P in the XP for performance is to the fore here. The owner really wants to race her and has been very active over winter doing the sand series and is looking forward to summer. It's a pleasure to sail on a boat that really wants to be sailed and is enjoyable to sail and I'm sure the owner will have many happy races over the summer. Kiwis are obsessed by the weather and boaties are more obsessed than most. Predict Wind is an app developed by New Zealand champion sailor John Bilger and it's helping thousands of users in New Zealand and around the world take a closer look at what the weather is going to do next. I've got it on my phone, I love using it and I love finding out more about the science behind how it works. New Zealanders love to talk about the weather and we've got plenty of weather to talk about. As a series of little islands in the middle of a vast ocean, we've got the roaring 40s bringing across a westerly, we've got cold air coming up from Antarctica, and we've got tropical lows coming down out of the Pacific. So as boaties, it's really important to know what the weather's going to do next so we can stay safe and enjoy our boating. So where can we go to get the most up-to-date, accurate weather information that's tailored for our conditions? One of the world's most popular and accurate weather forecasting apps was actually invented right here in New Zealand. Former dinghy champion John Bilger was working for the Swiss Alinghi Syndicate in 2003 and 2007 and as their weather guru he helped them win both those events. At the end of that time he decided he wanted to share that weather modelling with a wider audience and so launched Predict Wind in 2008. Since then the Predict Wind team has developed an app and website which provide highly accurate user-friendly weather modelling for sites around the world. They've concentrated on things like good-looking, quick-to-load graphics which are easy to understand, as well as the stuff behind the scenes that we can't see, like data from a new network of nano-satellites. The great news is that a lot of the features of Predict Wind are free. You can subscribe for more detailed data and weather routing. I'll talk a bit more about that later. But there's more than enough information for the recreational boaty on here without paying a cent. So let's take a look at what Predict Wind has to offer. You can make it as simple or as technical as you want, and there are lots of tutorials and help guides along the way. To get started, all you need to do is drag and drop the pin to set your home point. 
The good news is you can also add additional home points or move that around if you're going away cruising or fishing somewhere and need to hone in on that forecast. If you just want the basic details, a written weather forecast like you might read online, then head for the daily briefing. That's what Team New Zealand calls the John Bilger forecast. It's the top line. So for every day for the next seven days, you've got information on wind speed, direction, temperature, the general weather conditions, sunning or raining, the sea conditions, so wave height and period, and what time the high tide is. All really useful information, and it's split into early, morning, afternoon, evening and overnight. That's my go-to for planning my sailing, cruising or family activities. If you want a visual representation of what the weather is going to do, you can pull up a map of your local area that will start off being centred on your home point, then you can zoom in or move around from there, and then overlay that with the weather information that you need. So I might be looking for wind speed and direction, wave height and period, cloud cover or rain. You can either look at specific times or run through a graphic animation. It's all so easy to use, it looks really good and it loads quickly because no one has time nowadays to stand around waiting for their phone to load up. If you want to get down more to the nitty gritty, you can also look at the data in a table or on a graph. So again, you're going to see wind speed and direction, rainfall, cloud cover, pressure, temperature, wave height, and also the phase of the moon and the movement of the tide. And let's not forget that all of this is free. And interestingly enough, I've spoken to John and he has a passion for weather that he just wants to share with people. He's happy for boaties to be using this information so they can get the most out of their boating. If you want a little bit more detail, if you are going offshore, if you want weather routing, there are subscriptions available. And one cool new subscription service that's recently been launched by Predict Wind is the ability to have live weather observations. The team has been out and about in the Hauraki Gulf and some sites around Wellington setting up live weather reading stations that you can access through the app. For example, you can now get live weather data from the Auckland Harbour Bridge, Flat Rock, Gannett Rock, further out in the Gulf and some sites around Wellington Harbour if that's where you're doing your boating. I've really enjoyed getting to know how Predict Wind works and hearing more about the story of its creation. It's super easy to use and you can be up and running in minutes on your phone, tablet or your home computer. It's a great way to support both a local innovator and get the best and most accurate information for your boating. We can't control the weather, but at least we can predict the wind. Spring is a great time for getting out fishing. Let's have a look at the Jeannot Mary Fisher 1095, the flagship of this French manufacturer's sport fishing range. Hi there, I'm Norman Holzhausen from Boating New Zealand. Today we're on the Mary Fisher 1095 from Jeannot Yachts. This is a cruising power boat with six berths, huge saloon, huge cockpit, and somewhat unusually for New Zealand conditions, it's powered by two Mercury 300 horsepower four-stroke outboards. Fantastic electronics package, and in fact this is a bit like a cockpit of a plane, or the, the uh, black dashboard here. In addition to the two outboards, we also have a bow thruster, which makes bringing it into the marina a piece of cake. This boat is a pilot house design, which means that you have a sliding door here, and the skipper can easily step alongside the cabin. So there's the forward or a master cabin with a, a very unique, slightly rounded bed. Uh, windows out the side, which gives uh, good visibility. To port and starboard each side, there's a guest cabin with a double bed. Fully equipped galley. Fridge. Twin burner gas hob. and the sink. As you might expect, a massive cockpit, plenty of space for six or eight people, uh, position for table with two different mounting points depending on where you want to uh, position it, and easy access along the side of the cabin to the forward area. The cockpit area can be reconfigured by moving this back rear bench forward and clicking it in place, opening up a larger area for water sports, getting into the water, swimming, diving, and also access to the twin Mercury outboards. The 
twin outboards push the Mary Fisher along at a good speed, uh, cruising speed of 23 knots and she hits a maximum of around 35 knots. The Mary Fisher 1095 is a great mid-range cruiser, suitable for family or, or a group of friends. Fantastic performance, handling and awesome detail inside. If you're wanting to treat yourself to experiencing the adventure of boating in your own vessel, have a look at these quality motor yachts currently being marketed by the team at the Motor Yacht Centre in Auckland. Dixie is a very special New Zealand built 63 footer capable of long range cruising the length of New Zealand or to the Pacific Islands. This is a big volume vessel custom built for a very experienced and discerning owner to the highest quality. The hull is a Don Senior design New Zealand craftsman built in triple skin microcarpa and composites. She has twin 700 horsepower man diesels on shafts in a huge walk around engine room and carries three and a half thousand litres of fuel. There is enormous volume inside, a roomy saloon, a fully equipped galley with dishwasher, fridge and multiple freezers, three bathrooms and three double cabins. Outside there is a serious fishing cockpit with a baked freezer and dive bottle compressor. It is well suited to outdoor living and entertaining with a huge sky lounge on the top level. The 52-footer Matawai is a great example from the highly regarded Aussie manufacturer Maritimo with 715 horsepower Caterpillar engines on each side. She has a welcoming and luxurious teak and leather interior, a fully enclosed air-conditioned sky lounge flybridge and an aft deck ideal for relaxing and entertaining. The accommodation consists of two bathrooms and three cabins. This vessel has numerous extras a high-spec Raymarine G-Series electronics package, FLIR night vision, satellite dome, water maker, game poles, game chair, bait station and tackle locker for serious anglers. There's also a dive compressor and upstairs a tender with a launching and retrieving davit. Contact Don or Donnell Senior at Motor Yacht Centre for information on both of these luxury family cruisers. Well, that's it for the first episode of Boating New Zealand and our September magazine. I hope you've really enjoyed looking at some of the boats we've featured, you've learned a little bit about albatross conservation, and that you've downloaded that Predict Wind app. I'm Sarah L, and we'll see you next month.